Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's uh, topic uh, for a lecture series will be on teamwork. Um, when man was created, at the beginning of creation, there was no one else in the world, one person. And we see that man, Adam, was basically lonely. And he asked God to uh, create a mate for him. And this is where Chava, the first woman, came. And, um, I mean, teamwork is, being with other people, so important. One of the forms of torture, solitary confinement. And one would think, what's the big deal? And yet we see that people, by their very nature, are social beings. And being by yourself with no one to talk to um, can really make a person mentally ill. It's very, it's very difficult to live with. But... There's more to it than that. An individual is limited into what he's able to do by himself. On the other hand, if you have a team, a group of people, anything more than one, your options are unlimited. Um, in fact, two people can actually lift more than each one can lift alone. That that group together is even stronger. We see it a lot in sports that teams that are able to, so to speak, rotate to the ball, play as a team. When you have one great player and he's the only one there, they generally don't wind up being a winning team. What makes someone win, and even in sports that are individual sports, such as tennis, still they have a team that backs them up of all types of people, even though they may be performing on the court themselves. But the underlying it, there's a whole team that has to work with them coaches and trainers that make them what they need to be. Um, I served in the U.S. Army for two years and one of the things they do in basic is if one soldier in your, in your platoon screws up, they drop the whole platoon for push-ups. They try to make you into one unit. It becomes very important because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And what they're trying to do is make sure that everyone works together as a team, as one unit, because that one person can get everyone killed. Then it becomes essential that everyone works together and pulls what they have to. On a, on a religious t term and in a, in a way of looking at it in religious means, when the Jews received the Torah on Mount Sinai, one of the main things that they were given is this term called aravis, which translates to mean culpability, that we are all considered to be one body, that all Jews together form the shekhinah, the divinity of God. And much like a jigsaw puzzle, not a jigsaw, yeah, a jigsaw puzzle, if you have a thousand pieces and one piece is missing, what you do with the, the rest of the 999 is throw them away, it's useless. Every piece has a function, every piece is necessary, and every piece has its own special place. And this is what we have based on Judaism, this idea of culpability, that we're responsible for someone else. In the secular world, it's really mind your own business. Consenting adults, as long as people do something in the privacy of their own home, we don't care. Religiously, we care a great deal. Because again, if you ask someone whose toe hurts, how he's feeling, He's not going to say to you, I feel terrific. My toe, it's in bad shape. What he's going to tell you is I'm in pain. Because, and it's even more than that. You know, you can get a paper cut that doesn't bleed. And your whole day will be focused around that paper cut. It will seem like all that exists is that paper cut. Everything goes to that. So this idea of culpability, that we are all one unit, made of, the biggest thief in history, a Jew. Now, we didn't steal anything, and we have nothing to do with it, yet when you find out that the biggest thief in history is a Jew, it bothers you. It's almost as if it was you, which is strange. On the flip side, you hear that somewhere in some country, somebody whose name you can barely pronounce is Jewish, he won a Nobel Prize. You feel good. You don't know what, is, what he got it for. He can't explain anything about it, but you feel good about the fact that Someone who was Jewish wants something that was positive. So we see this, this idea of a ravis, of culpability, 
coming together. I, again, not only that, someone else being with you gives you inspiration and makes you do better. So why we have trainers. And then if you work out by yourself, it's hard to do. When you're working out with a friend or a trainer and you hear a word of encouragement from someone, it really is nothing. It's just a word, yet it does something. It makes you want to work harder, makes you feel better, makes you smile. It's an amazing phenomenon. When I was secular, before I became a Balchuva, even though I really, my whole concept in life, my whole goal in life was to have a good time. That was it. And somehow there was always something missing, almost like, you know, a pop or, or, or a sweetener, or like a saccharin. There was an aftertaste. I could never quite make the party perfect. And I couldn't figure out why until I got religious. And I came to understand that we have what... Hasidim call a yetzah her and a yetzah tov, a good inclination, a bad inclination. Tanya says it's a battle between these two armies to conquer you. That's the goal. And this good inclination and bad inclination are constantly trying to get you to follow them. And I couldn't understand why I couldn't get things perfect when I wanted to do things that were licentious, things that were, again, physical things that were a party. And yet when I got religious, somehow, some way, when I wanted to do something good, it worked. And what we say is that if a person's having problems overcoming his Yetzirah, his evil inclination, what he needs to do is get a friend. And when two Yetzirahs come together from you and someone else, then you can overcome your Yetzirah. Which sounds very romantic, but really is not logical. Because what we're saying is you have two Yetzirahs against one Yetzahara. But really, if you have two people, you have not only two Yetzirahs, good inclinations, but you also have two evil inclinations. Nothing changed. So the equation is still the same, you can, no matter how many people you have. So what's the difference? The difference is very logical. See, my, good, my evil inclination, by its very nature, is selfish. The only thing my evil inclination is that, it, it, that, that it's concerned with is me sinning. It's almost like cancer. If you stop and think about the, the disease of cancer, it's really kind of stupid. Because what cancer does, it's so evil, it's willing to kill itself to kill you. Because if cancer, so to speak, if it was in a person, if it stayed alive and just weakened the person, it could live forever. But yet it's willing to kill itself to kill you. Ultimate evil. And because that's all my inclination, my evil inclination is only concerned with one thing, me. It's selfish. It wants to destroy me. It doesn't care about you. But my good inclination, amazingly, is based on sharing, camaraderie. And my good inclination not only does it want me to be good, to be godly, to be a good person, it wants you to do it also. And it will go to great lengths to make that happen. So when two people get together, there is a camaraderie, there is a sharing of, of good intentions and even actions to make things work, to come closer to God, to be a better person, to help someone. And the evil inclination, very selfish. So that was the reason why I was secular, secular person. Things didn't work because it was all based on the evil inclination. Once I became a Balchu, once I became religious, all of a sudden things changed. And this camaraderie, in fact, someone once said to me that if you make one friend in a lifetime, you've succeeded. And we were sitting at a kiddish at a party, and I looked around the room, and I smiled at him, and I said, you're wrong. I said, half the people in this room, if I call them at 3 o'clock in the morning, will get out of their bed and come help me. It's all different. When you base your life on, the, on licentious type of things, dealing with things that are physical, that are based on true enjoyment, and that's it, yeah. Then making one friend's a big deal. But if you can connect to God and godly values, that all changes. I had a friend, and his mother I always lived with this. She said that joy with a friend is doubled, and sorrow is cut in half. So when you're part of a community, when you're part of this teamwork, difficulties become much easier. You have someone else to carry the load with you. Someone cares. 
And when you have joy, it's just over the top because someone's dancing with you, happy with you, sharing with you, wants you to be successful. You know, there was a, jet, there was a king of Israel. His name was Ahav. And Ahav, when his troops, even though he was an idol worshiper, when his troops went to battle, no one died. King David, when his troops went to battle, people died. And the reason was, when Ahav, the people in his kingdom, they got along. There was camaraderie. Where there's Shalom, God exists, even if they're idol worshippers. God's a parent. What a parent wants more than anything else, he would love his children to love him and to be a part of it. But more than anything else, he wants his children to get along. Nothing will hurt him more than seeing his children arguing and hating each other. We see the power of this camaraderie in a minyan. When ten men come together, all of a sudden this unit of ten breaks down the gates of heaven. That all of a sudden, God, we know that no matter who they are, whether they're religious or not, whether they're even evil people, but if you take ten Jewish souls and you bring them together in a room, the Shekhinah, the divinity of God, rests on them. And their prayers are answered. The power of the camaraderie, of teamwork. Even studying. We do not believe in a person studying by himself. We believe in what's called a chavrusa, a study partner. And it's amazing how, even myself as a teacher there, one day someone came up to me with a question. And I smiled at him and I said, I've had that question for years. I really don't know the answer. Five minutes later, I gave, walked up to him and had the answer. Because when people come together, it's inspiration. It creates certain things. But not only on earth, we learn better when we study with someone, but even in heaven, this concept of the Chavrusa, you will be in heaven with someone else. It's still based on this partnership of, of camaraderie. And again, the, all Torah is based on the mitzvah, the Ahavta Reach Kamocha, loving your neighbor as yourself. Again, camaraderie and showing love to someone else. In fact, they tell the cute story of a couple, an old couple that came to a doctor. And when they were taken into the examination room, the husband went with the wife. And when the doctor came in, it was the wife who was sick. And the husband said to the doctor, we have a pain. Because that's how close they had become. And you see that many times when, a, when one spouse passes away. The other spouse continues to speak in plural terms. We, us. Never I and me, because that gets inbred with them, this idea of camaraderie. They tell the story of the holy Baal Shem Tov, that he would stand in prayer for quite a while, and his students knew this, and the farmers, the, the simple people that came to pray with him, would leave and go take care of their business, and his students would stay until he would finish prayer. And one day, it happened that for some reason his students were hungry and they decided they knew how long he would take every day to pray so they would go and have some breakfast and they'd come back and be, they'd be back before he would finish his prayers. And that day when they came back he was done and waiting for them. And they were surprised and taken back. And one of the elder um, students that he had went to the Baal Shem Tov and said and asked him, Rebbe, every day you take a certain amount of time. Today you finish so much quicker. Why? And the Baal Shem said to this student, he said, you have to understand that I stand on your shoulders. And he said, the, the example is, I'll tell you a story. There was a man who had great vision. And he was able to see it on top of a tree. There was a very unusual, rare bird that he wanted to catch. And what he did, he didn't have a ladder. So he told his friends, I'm going to stand on, you stand on his shoulders, he stands on your shoulders, all the way up to the top of the tree, and I'll climb up on top of all of you, and then I'll get the bird that's on the top of the tree. And his friends did that. One got on top of the shoulders of the other. And he climbed on top of their shoulders, and when he reached the top, the person on the bottom thought, you know, he probably doesn't need me anymore. So he walked away, and all of them came crashing down. The Baal Shem Tov says the same thing with me when I pray. The only way I'm able to reach heaven is on the shoulders of my Hasidim, of my students. 
And when you're all here, I use you as a platform to stand on, to be able to reach the gates of heaven, to be able to, to make sure the prayers of all of Israel are heard. Today, when you left, I came tumbling down. So you should know that your purpose is very strong and very needed. And this is the idea. We need to know. We need to connect to people. We need to care about people. We need to be part of a team. When people, professional athletes, soldiers that are in battle, what they miss is the camaraderie, not the money. It's the camaraderie of being part of a thing. And you see that. My brother-in-law, who's not a religious person, said Kaddish for his father and went to a minion. And he was amazed. That's what he saw, the camaraderie in the synagogue of the men that come every day. And it makes a difference. And this is probably why God listens to a minyan. Because when people come together and there's love between them, this evokes God's love for us. So hopefully we'll work more on teamwork and being part of a community and part of people. Again, yeah, they can be a pain, but at the same time, there's no greater joy. May God bless us all that we're part of this team, God's team and that we make the world a better place in all that we do and all that we say. God bless you all. Have a good Shabbos, and thank you for coming.